Hello, everyone. Welcome to Onion Soup, the show where we demystify spirituality by pulling back the layers of metaphysics and reality. Today, we have a wonderful guest, Mr. Alabar Jones. Mr. Alabar utilizes his knowledge in astral travel to help people assess and heal their mental health issues. How are you doing today, Mr. Alabar? Never better, mate. How's your day? Doing wonderful. It's honestly a beautiful day out here. And you're coming from Sydney, Australia, correct? Byron Bay, Australia. But we're on Sydney time here. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're here in Phoenix for um, everyone who didn't know. But my first question is, well, first of all, what is astral travel? You can separate the mind from the body. There's a whole other world that's been called the spirit world, the Nagral, the astral planes, depending on which religion you ask. But they all have a word for the non-material world. And it's, you know, with the right techniques, with the right thoughts, um, you can separate your mind and start wandering through those worlds. There's a lot there to discover. That's amazing. How did you first learn that you could do this? Uh, I did a short course, actually. I did a, a weekend course in something called Theta Healing. But that was 15 years ago. I would have done at least 50 of those weekend courses. And I've probably got 20 or 25,000 hours of astral projection under my belt. I also manage teams of other astral projectors. And we fly around at night and try and uh, fix the, th the problems that imperil humanity right now. What do you mean by you fly around at night? Astral project. It's incredibly advanced work. Nine out of 10 healers will not have a clue what we're talking about. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So when you're on the astral planes, are you, when you say you're flying around and I would assume you're flying around our dimensional plane, right? So that means there are other planes of existence. Is the healing one where you astral project out and then come back to your body and fix your problem. So you fix your chakras, you fix your aura. When you get really advanced at it, you can do medical issues. Right? You can resolve medical issues. The other school is the military school. And those guys are interested in spy work. They go up to the non-material planes, fly over to the location they want to see, and then they come back down into the 3D and look around. And, um, you know, those... So, uh, look, the Monroe Institute is where they recruit a lot of their people, and um, mm -hmm. and they're very, very effective at what they do. Interesting. So, when you have one ability, say when you're doing healing techniques, does this also mean you can do remote viewing, or does that not mean you have that same affinity? Well, look, yeah, the, the trainings are more specialized, but you know, like I think I've trained in, I've trained in just about everything I can get my hands on. So. Um, so both of those are very straightforward for me. I'm really curious about how you utilize astral travel in your work. You do, uh, you help people with their mental health problems. How do you do that? Well, look, um, most people who are being treated by the mental health um, establishment are not very happy with the results they're getting. And I think the paradigm that the mental health establishment's using is fundamentally wrong. My statement is this simple. Um, all mental health issues are caused by demonic interference. I want you to think about that for a moment and wonder if the invisible monsters that are present in every religion and that are reputed to mess with people's minds might have something to do with mental health. But when I treat a person, I basically... Uh, reinvented exorcism like i haven't learned it anywhere but from contact time with demons and the human body i've managed to figure out the 11 places they like to hide the 11 body systems they like to inhabit and how to get them out of them and when i do that people's mental health issues evaporate when you say demons and entities on different dimensional planes Yep. Is this like a dimensional plane that's below ours or above ours or in coinciding with ours? Can you explain that? Um, I think higher and lower planes is a bit of a, a non sequitur. 
it's the same plane, different locations have higher and lower frequencies. Um, there are segregated mm. se uh, locations that are specific to one energy, one feeling, one emotion, one singular frequency. But uh, it's not higher. The Hindus are responsible for saying that the astral has, is a lower plane, but it's all one plane. Uh, and you can wander into bliss or hell as you choose. We're talking about the planes, the one plane, and you said it's just a different vibrational frequency. Does this mean that the demonic entities or lower vibrational frequencies, and by lower, I just mean something that vibrates at a slower rate than what it is that we vibrate, uh, Am I looking at that accurately, saying that these demonic entities just vibrate lower or different than us? Exactly right. Yeah, like we we would know them as um, second rate emotions. Things like, oh, well, fear is the word that everybody uses, but despair and sadness and anger and uh, jealousy and hate and anything like that would fit into that lower vibrational category. So a lot of times, and you mentioned the Hindu uh, and the Hindu beliefs and practices, and they talk a lot about the seven chakras. Now, when we look at the chakras and we talk about the root chakras typically deals with fear and pain of that nature. When you're going through and helping people with these mental issues and eradicating the demonic energy, is this mostly on their lower chakra frequency? I have a few things to clarify there, right? Number one is that Fear can exist anywhere in the body. It doesn't just exist in the lower in the lower chakras. The mm -hmm. lower chakras are important to development. There is a theory flying around up there out there that if you develop your your higher chakras from the heart up are important, the lower ones are not. But if you develop yourself like that, then you become mm -hmm. a space cadet. Like your lower chakras are about practicalities, getting things done, having a job, being on time, doing normal human adult things, right? And if you're not developing them, then what happens is you become very, very clever and very, very compassionate, but not able to, uh, what's the word, mm -hmm. ground or deliver anything of that nature to the earth. It is a continuous system. And just to, just to clarify the... Um, manifestation pathway it goes inspiration through the crown you think about it you talk about it you feel it then you put your will into it through the solar plexus chakra you your passion and your creativity about how you're going to do it um, comes through the sacral and then in the red chakra you give birth to it into the physical the the whole system has to be integrated now, different, emo different demons mess with different emotions, which are associated and connected to different chakras. And yes, it is a part of the story. When you clean, so when you clean up somebody's system, there are chakras that need to be rehabilitated. I will go further and say that different, each chakra has its own addictive tendencies. And so the base chakra would be something like alcohol or, and or workaholism. The sacral chakra would be involved with uh, amphetamines or upper drugs and sex. The solar plexus chakra would be is involved with downers and uh, self-assertion or bullying is a solar plexus chakra thing. But uh, weed and heroin uh, impact that chakra really, really badly. And if anyone watching this show smokes a lot of weed, I want you to put your hand just at the bottom of your ribcage and press into your solar plexus chakra. If you feel sore or wounded or bruised or weak, then you've probably got an entity there due to your weed smoking. The heart, the heart chakra is about uh, codependency. The throat is about compulsive lying. This one's called the pressure of ideas. And the crown chakra doesn't get infected very often. 
if that helps, if that answers some of your questions about chakras. No, that is wonderful because a lot of times when I talk to people about the seven chakras, and that was more me playing devil's advocate, but I also tell people that the point is to be within balance of all of your chakras. So you don't want one to be more heavily, we'll say charged than another. And we don't want one to be more depleted than another. The point is to be in balance. And in that way, this is how we are able to achieve what we consider like higher consciousness and then start being able to develop uh, what we consider supernatural abilities. So I really love your explanation on the chakras. <laughs> So when you go through and you're helping people with their, you know, I have another question before I get to that one. So when you all go out and do your astral traveling to heal certain aspects of the planet, um, what does that look like? Do you, are you in your, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> How long is a piece of string? Huh? It depends what we're doing. So just last night, we found a demonic altar and shut it down and the priest involved in it. The week before that, we were working on a crystalline grid that's 85 kilometers above the surface of the planet. Uh, we've been working with Rainbow Serpent, who's the serpent that, or the snake that uh, encompasses the whole world. Uh, the week before that, what were we doing? Uh, Alien portals to Earth, we were closing some of them down. Like we've fought reptilians and greys and mantoids. Uh, we've worked extensively with Ashtar, sorry, Ashtar Command and uh, the Galactic Federation of Light. Um, we, 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 I don't know, we've done so much stuff. What does it look like? Each scenario is different. Something I want to touch on, you said that you're talking about the grid that sits 85 kilometers above Earth. Can you talk about that? Is that like the Christ consciousness grid or what is this grid? Um, it's a precursor to the Christ consciousness grid. I don't think we're gonna get a Christ consciousness. We have access to Christ consciousness, but I don't think we're gonna get a grid on Earth for another 40 years. So the consciousness here is just one carrier. Uh, but that mm -hmm. particular grid is one that Mother Earth asks us to install so that we can step or something like that. We say Mother Earth asked you to install. Again, what does that look like? Was that something that oh, a sorry, spiritual sorry. entity came to you or? Oh, about 10 years ago, or be more than 10 years ago now, I was at the, uh, I was in Mexico for the 2012 event. And we were dancing around in Palenque. Um, which, as it turns out, is the globe's throat chakra um, and, a, and a temple complex that spans 10 square kilometres. It's an incredible sight. Um, but while I was there, after we danced and um, did the ceremony on December 21st, 2012, um, I, was then take, I was then intuited to go to a particular altar and Mother Gaia came to me and give, gave me my first job title. He says, I'd like you to come and work for me and I'd like you to come and perform tasks for me. And so then uh, Mother Earth gave me a long string of missions and that was 10 years ago and I'm still, still, working, still working on them. Um, it, and it's, it's great fun and it's all to do with Mother Earth's ascension. So when you say Mother Earth, is this the, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with ayahuasca. Um, is this the same entity that people say they encounter when they see Mother Aya? Um, well, look, I've never had ayahuasca and I don't think it's necessary. I don't think, but we are going to the same place. I used to actually date uh, an ayahuasca priestess. Um, and we talked about the things we'd see. She, during her ayahuasca journeys, me during my 
personal astral travel. And uh, we'd talk about what we'd see, and it's the same, we're going to the same place. But whereas when you're with Ayahuasca, Ayahuasca is, is uh, running the show. When I'm doing it, it's totally my volition and I get to go where I want. Mm. And also, also, you don't need drugs to do this wild consciousness stuff. Every human body is capable of it. Mm. We all have the associated anatomy, the penile gland, uh, the brain, like the different sections of the brain that are important. All of this is what it takes to astral project, and every human has it. Uh, if you just put in the meditation hours, then you might actually be able to do it without the help of psychedelics. For the average person, how many meditation hours would it take to be able to start achieving some of these gifts? It's not about meditation hours. It's about two things. Oh, look, meditation hours will help you. Your, the muscles that you use for this have atrophied. Since we're not taught to use them as kids, those muscles shrivel and die. And they take a bit of time to revive. The two, fa the two factors that, you, that will change that is the type of meditation you do and how clean is your body if you've done cleanses if you've if you're physically fit then this is easier right the cleaner your body is the clearer your visualizations are likely to be just takes a little bit of time to um get into the zone with it so you say that there are specific types of meditations uh what type of meditation would be best to help with these practices. I know that one that people tend to use is Kriya Yoga and Kriya Meditation. So is that something that you would recommend or are there other more effective types? Well, look, the, the, just, just a note on yoga, the entire point of yoga is actually uh, Svidasana, the corpse pose at the end, because you go into a deep, deep meditation. You go into a delta state meditation. Mm. Um, most of the work that I do is in theta state, or with, yeah, theta state meditations, which is where it's at. Um, most of what pe meditation to me means as many things as the word exercise, uh, mm. specifically. But most people will encounter stillness meditations or breath meditations where you try and still the mind. Um, and this is these are these are Buddhist meditations and. They just annoy me, really. I think like uh, you could skip that and go. So after you've done five years of stillness meditation with the Buddhists, after you've done five years of practice with them, you've gone on their camps and their weekends, you've done you know this or that. Once you put on the orange robe, then they start teaching you the funky astral projection stuff. And you know, and I found it from I got it from the hippies because the hippies just wanted some money, and I had some. Mm -hmm. It was actually really, really straightforward. Um, I will, I will repeat something that I said during the week, though, and it said, I said that a lot of people do those weekend meditation courses, and they pay their five hundred or their thousand bucks to go and learn these interesting and intriguing astral projection techniques, and then they don't use them. Like I remember, like my very first class, there were seven of us in the class, and what I found out later was that I was the only one who was doing that every day. Mm. That was it, and this is, and it's just the daily practice that got me to the top of the game. Interesting. Wow, so fast! I have so many. It's easy. <laughs> it's actually really easy. Astral projection is not hard. You just need the right training. So is there a, like maybe something brief you can give everyone? I know that you offer classes on your website on how to do this, but is there anything brief you could tell people on how to get started with astral projection? For those people who are interested in any, well, look, if, okay, firstly, don't reinvent the wheel. Just go and do a course. If you want to try, if you want to not pay, then you're just going to slow down by years and years and years. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I do have on my YouTube channel, I do have a free energy healing technique um, and it takes about 15 minutes to learn. Uh, it's, mm. it's very, it's easy, it's powerful, it's very adaptable. Um, it's just one of the things that I've put together over the many years that I've been doing this. But the course that I put together is what I wish someone had shown me right from the very beginning. Um, mm. There are a number of cul-de-sacs and mistakes that can get made in the spiritual trainings and spiritual milieu. And uh, we've techniqued around those. And so you avoid a lot of the, of the bad news traps that people are likely to fall into. I don't talk much philosophy. I just talk technique, technique, technique. And, mm. and my graduate students, they're the ones who do the meditation every day. It's, it takes about a year, a year and a half to complete my training, but you'll have the skill set of the top 5 or 10% of meditators out there. And my graduate students um, each go and pursue their own thing. They have the capacity to go and research their own issues. So my favorite story is uh, I had a teacher. She, was a, she had a, a student. She was a German lady, and she traveled a lot, and everywhere she went, Everybody made jokes about the Nazis with her, and she hated it. She hated it. So she went into collective consciousness to try and delete German war guilt, so mm. that she wouldn't fit, so that nobody would make her feel guilty. The collective consciousness did not have uh, the German war guilt in it. She took a bite out of it. Mm. She got most of one percent out of it, but burned herself out in the process. You know. So what I'm saying is, wow. whatever you want to do, the skills I'll teach you will take you there. Wow. Well, it's been wonderful having you on. I have a few minutes left. Is there anything that uh, you want to tell the audience about your business, about your website? Um, I have... A very, a very rare and very powerful skill set that deals with mental health issues. Um, so those people who's who have a family member who's in trouble, who needs, uh, who the medical profession is failing them, please reach out and get in contact with me. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, I expect to be launching a product called Ultimate Shadow Work which clears out the pain bodies associated with thinking too much, mood swings, uh, negative uh, thought loops or negative paradigms, and impulse control. It also includes the rehabilitation of the three minds, the head, heart, and gut. And the really special thing about it is that we also found a way to delete a human being's entire Akashic record in about four hours. Oh. So, and what that means is that all of your karma gets deleted and you don't have to put up with reliving the mistakes of your past lives, which you can't remember, which you may or may not be responsible for. Um, but yeah, like these, the, that technique cluster is so powerful. And I tentatively say it makes you eligible for ascension. Wow. That's amazing. Well, we're going to have to have you back on. I have so many more questions. Please do. And, please do. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Mr. Alibar, for coming on. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. See you soon, mate.